Please direct your attention to the Clinton Presidential Park Bridge and give a warm welcome to the 42nd President of the United States, William Jefferson Clinton, accompanied by Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton, Chelsea Clinton, Assistant Secretary of Commerce John Fernandez, and Governor Mike Beebe. Track one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the presentation of colors by the Little Rock Air Force Base Color Guard and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance led by the Clark family grandchildren followed by our national anthem performed by the Clinton Foundation's Lena Moore. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets Red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say. Does that star spangled? 
gold Then I yet wave Oh, the land of the free And the home of the brave. Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome to the Clinton Presidential Center. Thank you for joining us here today as we celebrate the dedication of the Clinton Presidential Park Bridge and the William E. Bill Clark Wetlands. This is an exciting day, one that we have worked hard for and looked forward to for many years. I would like to acknowledge the Little Rock Air Force Base Color Guard for posting our nation's colors. I would also to sincerely like to thank the grandchildren of Margaret and Bill Clark for leading us in our Pledge of Allegiance, and a special thank you to the Clinton Foundation's own Lena Moore for her beautiful performance of the National Anthem. President Clinton, we are here today because of you. You had the foresight to look at a rundown and underutilized piece of property and picture a vibrant cultural and educational center, a venue that would attract millions of visitors from across the state and around the world. We are extremely grateful for your ongoing investment in Arkansas. I'd now like to recognize and thank our guests seated on the stage, the remarkable former First Lady of Arkansas and the nation, Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton. <laughs> and what a thrill to have back in Little Rock, Chelsea Clinton, and Mark Mizvinsky. <laughs> Governor Mike Beebe, Assistant Secretary John Fernandez, Pulaski County Judge Buddy Valines, Little Rock's Mayor Mark Stodola, North Little Rock Mayor Pat Hayes, Little Rock City Director Dr. Dean Compuris, Margaret Clark and William Clark, Ronnie Mobley, who served as the general contractor for the Clinton Bridge, and a very special thank you to the Clinton Foundation's Director of Facilities, Debbie Schock. We are so grateful to all of you for your commitment and your many contributions to these two important projects. It is now my great pleasure to welcome to the podium Little Rock's Mayor, Mark Stodola. Well, thank you, Stephanie. And uh, thank you for taking time today to acknowledge all of our special guests that are here with us today on such a beautiful, beautiful, sunny, I guess it's still morning. No, it isn't anymore. <laughs> Those of us who know you well, Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President, Secretary Clinton and Chelsea, we are especially honored to have the three of you here with us today. And Mr. President, I speak on behalf of all of the Little Rock residents and all our Kansans when I say that you have literally and figuratively changed the landscape of our city and our state, and we are profoundly grateful.
Today we dedicate both the Clinton Presidential Park Bridge and the Bill Clark Wetlands, two great amenities that will further complement the wonderful riverfront park that we have here on this side of the river. The bridge not only represents a connection between two cities, but also a way of connecting people brought together to experience God's beautiful outdoors. Literally thousands and thousands of people, pedestrians and cyclists alike, will enjoy the wonderful parks and trails along the river. And I want to thank you for completing the loop. The William E. Bill Clark Wetlands is a case study in community collaboration and commitment. There are few places in this country that have a presidential library and even fewer that have an urban wetlands. The wetlands will provide a unique opportunity to teach children and adults alike about the delicate balance between urbanization and nature. To Margaret, William, Mary Catherine, and to all of the entire Clark family, Bill Clark's legacy as reflected by the Presidential Library and Grounds, will serve generations to come. Bill was a larger-than-life figure who generously gave of his time, his talents, and his gifts to benefit our city of Little Rock and the greater community. Thank you for sharing his life with us. <clears throat> to Vice Mayor Dean Compuris, you have been a tireless champion for the wetlands. You were the driving force who brought all the parties together, many of whom worked without compensation, to create this one-of-a-kind amenity and attraction that generations of young and old are going to enjoy for years to come. Your commitment to improving our city is contagious, and it's one that I hopefully uh, believe will inspire future leaders of the city. While there are numerous people to thank and uh, who contributed to making the wetlands a reality, I would like to personally thank Kay Arnold, Joe Hankins, Phil Harrington, Scooter Stewart, Hugh McDonald, Bill Dillard, Cindy Drilling, Martin Smith, Bruce Moore, Mark Webb, Steve Beck, our City Public Works Department and our City Parks Department, and my colleagues, the governing body of the City of Little Rock, our City Board of Directors who are with us here today for the wonderful decisions that they made to make this whole ground and library and area in our city so wonderful. Thank you. The successful creation of these wetlands is much about engineering, construction, and architecture, but it's also about collaboration. Corporations, individuals, nonprofit organizations, federal and state agencies all believed in this project, and together they made it a reality. And thank you, President Clinton, and thank you, the Clinton Foundation. Without your generous contributions, this would not be the grand opening that it is today. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to introduce my good friend from across the river, North Little Rock Mayor Pat Hayes. Pat. Thank you, Mark. It's really great to be in South North Little Rock once again. <laughs> we are pleased to be here on this day, Mr. President, Madam Secretary, Chelsea. It's an exciting time for us, and I know that you and, uh, and many of your uh, early crew are going to be celebrating your 20th uh, announcement of uh, the 20th year of your announcement for the presidency. And I can, I pointed out in showing some folks around the tree that I was leaning on in front of the old state house when that happened those 20 years ago. And when you think about what's happened over that period of time, you just really kind of drift back. And, you know, 20 years ago is today. You know, I know that I've uh, been over at City Hall for 23 years and started our trail going out toward uh, the Big Dam Bridge, Murray Lock and Dam, uh, Judge Valign, certainly the Quorum Court, and, uh, and that with Two Rivers Park that just opened uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, and, and now the linchpin of the river trail system is going to be open for general use on Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, and it's be a beautiful uh, facility. Let me ask all the bikers and the walkers and the strollers and the skaters and the joggers and everybody else, let's let him hear how pleased we are that we're going to open that today.
You know, you, you go back and, uh, and, and really kind of think of some of the things that's happened over the last 20 years. And as I kind of looked, uh, our friend Derek Fisher uh, was just starting his career at UALR, and now he's finishing his 14th, getting ready to go into his 15th season as, as an L.A. Laker with a little bit of an interruption. And, of course, then we think about when uh, in 1999 when we opened Alltel, now Verizon Arena, when uh, – uh, Derek was going to play with the L.A. Lakers and the Washington Riz Wizards, and a little bit of a postponement occurred uh, because of some raker beans and cantilevers, and, you know, that's part of our history, but that facility, well, it, I'll tell you just a little bit about that. Uh, my first date with my wife uh, was about 30 years ago, and we went down to watch the Rolling Stones perform in Dallas in the, in the Cotton Bowl. Well, we celebrated, Mr. President, uh, Madam Secretary Chelsea, we celebrated our 25th anniversary when the Rolling Stones came to North Little Rock. Now, I don't know if they knew they were singing exactly to us, but they came to North Little Rock, and we, over these years, have started enjoying things that our community so richly deserves. And, and you and Madam Secretary and Chelsea, let me just, you know, doesn't it just feel right doesn't it feel right now that they're back here and we're all together? It's sort of like a family reunion. You know, all, you know, we look at some of the things that have happened. We're finishing the fifth season of Dickie Stevens Park, uh, uh, and, and, and I can tell you the first season, the things that warm your heart, uh, well, it did mine. On the first, at the end of the first season, and I was walking uh, uh, down toward the, the gate, and I had to stop uh, a second or two because crossing the street uh, was a mother and a father and two children, and they were all holding hands as they were crossing the street going to a ball game. Now, that place is bricks and mortar and steel, and, and yet what it is is a place that's going to create memories. It's going to build character. It's going to give us the kind of thoughts that uh, are really – what we have as family, as friends, and as, as, a, as a community, as a state, as a nation. And your bridge, uh, with what it's going to add to the character of this community and what it means to us, and it's the embodiment, you know, to us, and I hope and I feel to you, of your bridge to the 21st century. Uh, and the hopes and the dreams and the cheers and the applauds, you know, won't go nearly as far as the day in and the day out use that this community is going to have in enjoying this facility. You know, and you, you can't help but think, as we think about this great day, you know, some of the folks that aren't here. We know Bill Clark and, and the spirit of his uh, part of the community. I know uh, a lot of things that he did. And of course, his son and Margaret are here. And a few days ago, you know, I was trying to think of something that was a little special that North Little Rock might be able to do. And, and I had an idea, and I checked with all our city council. And by the way, I'd like for the North Rock City Council to wave. Uh, we've got a good number of out here, and it was unanimous. But we thought that what could be more fitting, and I don't know if you had a chance to see it because it's up, uh, than to sort of, uh, in, in our own way, uh, cause a reflection and a recollection of the fact of two special people I know in your lives, Dick Kelly and your mother, Virginia, that aren't here in body, but without a doubt, they're here in spirit. And so what we wanted to do is that little block and a half just off Riverfront Drive, uh, we unanimously decided that what we want to do in the future for that bridge is if somebody on the north side says, where is that Clinton Bridge? Well, we can say, go to Virginia Kelly Drive, and it'll be right there. And now I have the honor to bring up a, a terrific fella. And in fact, I, I didn't know John before, but you know we've got uh, 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 the executive director of the Conference of Mayors, Tom Cochran, and I have sort of visited a little bit with John Fernandez. You already introduced to him a second ago, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Economic Development. But really, 
I want you to welcome to the microphone, not the Assistant Secretary, but the former mayor of Bloomington, Indiana from 1996 to 2003, John Fernandez. John, come on up. Thanks, Mayor. Yeah, I got a lot of titles, but unfortunately, I have the duty of following Mayor Hayes this morning. So I do uh, really want to thank President Clinton, the Clinton family, and everyone for inviting me back today. Uh, the city is, uh, you know, always rolls out a wonderful welcoming mat. I want to thank the gentleman to my left who's got on the IU hat, making me feel right at home. We're everywhere. But it is great to be here with the governor and, and both mayors and so many other people. Uh, to be able to kind of close our own loop uh, from the day that we were here in May when we did the uh, groundbreaking. The weather's a little bit nicer, uh, and it's absolutely a fabulous, fabulous day. Uh, I represent the Economic Development Administration. I have probably the best, well, the second best gig in the administration uh, because I get to go out and do these kinds of things. But most importantly, it's our staff in our Austin office that really do the heavy lifting. And I did want to take a moment to recognize uh, Sam Spearman and Camille Osborne, who are both here from uh, our Austin office. And thank you uh, for all the work you did on this project. You know, I had a chance to walk across the bridge with uh, the President and, and um, Secretary Clinton and, and the whole family and uh, Governor Baby. And I, I, I was really struck by uh, the, just the visual impression of, of seeing uh, the view, the connection, the connectivity between communities, uh, the, the source of pride that people have in, in the history of the river, the wetlands, and tying this all uh, together. Of course, the symbolism of the uh, library's architecture and this bridge couldn't be more uh, vivid in what we're here about today. Uh, you know, Mayor ha Hayes mentioned uh, the bridge to the 21st century, and, and I remember uh, when uh, President Clinton used those words, and it meant a lot to me because it was so important for us to be thinking about where we're going, how we're bringing our country and our community forward into challenging and new times in a very different uh, global, global community. And this uh, bridge, I think, really does symbolize that quite well. Uh, the EDA was very happy to play a, a small part in making this happen. Uh, the grant we gave uh, certainly helped uh, finance the project, but it really is all of the folks that the mayor referenced who collaborated, who did the work, the contractors, the people with the vision uh, that really do uh, the important day-to-day -day activities to make this uh, possible. You know, I just want to uh, say that, um, you know, I, I am a former mayor, and, and I just know how important these kind of amenities are uh, to connecting people into a common where we know we're all part of one community but also attracting uh, people who want to start businesses here, uh, people who want to live here, work here, bring their companies here. Uh, we certainly appreciate uh, the recreational components and all of that, but make no mistake, these kinds of investments are also an important part of the foundational investments we make to grow our economy, uh, to create jobs, to encourage uh, additional investment in companies and in people and in communities. So we're very, again, happy uh, to be a part of this uh, project, uh, to have an opportunity to come back and share the stage with so many distinguished leaders, and to thank all of you uh, for being here. And on a personal note, I really want to say thank you uh, to President Clinton, uh, to Secretary Clinton, for all the work they've done on behalf of our country and on behalf of people all over the world. Not only what they've done, but what they continue to do. And I really do mean that sincerely. Thank you all very much. Those of you that knew Bill Clark will understand when I say, Bubba, this is a neat deal. <laughs> Bill Clark called everybody Bubba whether he was the 42nd president of the United States or whether he was somebody helping to erect a steel beam on one of the projects. And he said it lovingly. There's a statue of Bubba down there because we always turned it back on him. He was Bubba too. And Bubba was a term that wasn't pejorative. 
It was a term of love and endearment and friendship and affection. And so, to the Clark family, this is a day to celebrate Bubba and to celebrate what was important to Bubba and to forever live in the memory of your family and people for generations to come, Bill Clark's contribution to the people of Arkansas and to the land and the water that he loved and cherished so much. Margaret, thank you for sharing him with us. <laughs> Mr. President, we have, in addition to you and I, three former governors down here. A uh, couple of them went on to be senators, but none of them ever had it as good as when they were governor. You get the best parking places. <laughs> Senator Mark Pryor is also with us. The Attorney General is with us. Thank all of you for your attendance. Thank all of the people who are here. Yesterday, a reporter here asked me about the attention and the excitement surrounding Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton's return. Bill Clinton's celebration of 20 years out of the announcement of his race for the presidency. Bill Clinton's return for the dedication of this bridge. And the reporter almost tried to answer his own question, as reporters often do, <laughs> and said, is it just everybody's desire to remember when and to think back? Is it a nostalgia for Clinton and the Clinton days. And I said, I think it's a nostalgia for the time when leadership existed to bring people together. I want to tell a very quick story that exemplifies that. And it's micro, but it's also macro. A couple of years ago, Erskine Bowles, who was the president's chief of staff for a while, spoke to the governors, Republicans and Democrats alike, and he told the story about how the president of the United States sent him to the Hill to sit down with the Republican Speaker of the House and the Republican Majority Leader of the U.S. Senate to at that time address what was a pressing issue on the minds of a lot of fair-minded people. And that is how do we worry about our children and our grandchildren? How do we take care of posterity with regard to our national economic future? How do we attack the national debt? The story that Erskine told was that for several weeks, not much was done. I don't think Newt thought he trusted Erskine or Bill, and I don't think Trent trusted either one of them. And they danced around for a few weeks. And after a few weeks when they determined that nobody was going to talk out of school, that people were truly serious about attacking this significant long-term problem, they got down to business. And they hammered out because of the president's leadership and because of his desire to reach across partisan aisles and embrace leaders from the other political party. A long-term plan that resulted in three years of national budget surpluses and and had this country on a path to removing the national debt for the first time since Andrew Jackson. That's the legacy of Bill Clinton. So yeah, I told the reporter that there was a nostalgia for Bill Clinton. And with this audience, there's a lot of personal nostalgia because so many people in this audience 
Uh, you know, Arkansas is that way. Dale Bumpers, David Pryor, they can tell you that. I can tell you that. There are so many people who have personal connections. There's not any crossroads or grocery store or gas station or community in this whole state. We were just talking to the former sheriff of, of uh, Crawford County. Everybody knows or feels like they know Bill Clinton. People in the national media say, what's this deal in Arkansas about your elected officials and why do they connect with people on the national level so well? You don't get elected in Arkansas if you don't connect with those folks. They'll kick you out of office or not even put you there in the first place. So there's a lot of this connection that longs for Bill Clinton and longs for Hillary because of their personal long-time connections. But it's bigger than that, people. And the reporter really got it. And the reporter captured it by the very nature of his question. It's a longing for the days when leadership in this country could put down ideological differences, could set aside per personal partisan gain, could talk about what's best for the American people, and more importantly, what's best for the American people's posterity. It's a time for leadership, and Bill Clinton provided that in a way that we haven't seen in a long, long time. And so, yeah, everybody wants to see more of it. So with that, I give you the 42nd governor of the state of Arkansas and the 42nd president of the United States, William Jefferson Clinton. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor Beebe. Thank you for reminding me of what my number is. As I get older and more addle brain, the fact that both numbers are the same make it a heck of a lot easier to remember. <laughs> Senator Pryor, thank you for being here. David, Barbara, Dale, Betty, thank you for being here. Bill Bowen, <clears throat> thank you for being here. You're still looking pretty young, man. Governor Tucker, thank you for being here. Thanks for bringing your sister. Dustin, thank you. James Lee and Lee Ellen, thank you. Mac, Frank, he looks just like you except better, Mac. <laughs> Skip and Billy, Bruce and Hallie, thank you all. Terry Garner, thanks for doing a great job with the library. I'd really like to thank my son-in-law for coming down here into a strange land. We were talking about the uh, baseball playoffs on the way down here and Marcus from Philadelphia. So we were asking whether Hillary and I, he thought the Yankees could beat the Tigers. He said it doesn't matter, Philadelphia is the only team in baseball that won over 100 games. The World Series is as much as decided. That's right. We're trying to get used to all this. I, I want to thank the city and county official, Judge Valines, thank you. You didn't speak, and like always, you're a person of few words and a lot of action. And uh, I thank the mayors, both of who have been my friends forever. I also want to thank Dean Compuris. I'm not sure any of this would have happened if it hadn't been for him over years and years and years. And uh, Margaret, William, all the members of the Clark family, I want to thank Bill's grandchildren. Your grandfather would have been so proud of you standing up on this stage today. You know, <clears throat> I, I would be in favor of what we're doing today and naming these wetlands for Bill Clark if I had never really known him just because of his life work, but I really did love the guy. And the longer I knew him, the more I cared for him. And as nearly as I could see, he only failed at one thing in his entire life. It's one thing he was an abject failure in. You know, he was a scratch golfer into his seventh decade. And he spent unbelievable hours trying to turn me into a decent one, and he failed. But we both had a good time trying. 
this day could only be more perfect if he were here with us to celebrate it. And Margaret, William, to all of you, I, I thank you. And I'm honored that this happened. And I'm looking forward to extending the wetlands over there because the first time I ever went out on that porch, I looked down over there and I saw a red fox with no visible means to get there. He was out on there and I thought that, that would qualify as a place to be preserved. I also want to say something, Mayor Hayes. You know, when we dedicated this library in a rainstorm, I pointed out that some of my critics compared it to a high-tech house trailer. <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be a metaphor for a bridge to the 21st century. They said it was a high-tech house trailer. And I made a joke that I kind of like that since I wanted my library and center to be a place where ordinary Americans could actually come and relate to what happened. But <laughs> and uh, this week, Mike, you may have seen it, there was an article in one of the national uh, press saying that Arkansas couldn't decide whether to shed its hillbilly image or embrace it and said there was something, there was some kind of redneck Olympics or something going on in Clinton, Clinton where they were having their equivalent of horseshoe throwing where people tried to throw, throw a toilet seat around the marker. <laughs> and I thought, that's okay, I like that too. But when we were coming over here on the bridge, the first thing I noticed, Mayor Hayes, is that on the other side of my house trailer is an RV park. And if my mother's street leads to that, she'd like that too. <laughs> I want to say just a couple of things seriously. This bridge is important because first it keeps the promise we made, all of us, with the help of you, Mr. Secretary, for which I'm very grateful, and Governor, your help. We came up with the money, which turned out to be two and a half times what the original estimate was, to complete this trail loop. And it's important. I'm proud of it. But this bridge is more than 110 years old. Just like the headquarters there of our presidential center and the Clinton School. So it, protect, it, it connects our past to our present. It connects because of the preserve here, our reverence for nature with our support for the advancement of civilization. I have to tell you, I'm going to brag on this. There was an article written in an architectural blog site this week, at least I saw it on the internet, it might be in a magazine, where the writer said there are five truly beautiful buildings in the United States that have received a platinum leads rating, the highest environmental rating you can give, and he listed this one first. So I'm very grateful. The So we're connecting people to nature and our past to our present. I tell people all the time when they ask me, you know, how did it turn out so well? I say, well, you know what we brought to Washington, D.C. was arithmetic. A radical new idea that if two and two was four in Little Rock, it'd probably still be four by the time we got to Washington. and a concern for our kids. If you think about it, and all the sort of hyperventilating rhetoric that surrounds politics, and I contributed my fair share, I'm not being sanctimonious here. When it's all said and done, there are really only three things that matter. Are people better off when you quit than when you started? Do the children have a better future? And are things coming together or falling apart? Everything else is background music. Nothing else matters. Bridges bring things together. 
biggest problem we got today in America is that conflict and driving people apart is both good politics and exciting media. The lines are blurred between the news, the entertainment, and the commentary. You got all these guys like me who are home alone a lot. My wife has a traveling job. So I'm channel surfing. I never have to watch the news. I can just watch sports events and movies. A lot of you do too. So if you're trying to get yourself a little market share, conflict is a lot more sexy on the news than pointing out how people plotted and argued and got through to a common agreement. I don't know if Congressman Griffin's here or not, but he was going to come. And we all got to thank you. Congressman, stand up. Thank you for being here. So, you know, I fought with Dick Army and Tom DeLay and Newt Gingrich. We shut the government down twice, and everybody finally got exhausted and decided to go to work, and it worked out pretty well for you. I just finished reading a book by a woman named Katherine Schultz called Being Wrong. And her argument is that one of the reasons that humanity has survived all this time is because of our mistakes because we learn from them. And that actually, we all shouldn't be so afraid to admit that we might be wrong. It enables us to grow and learn and go together. So we're living in a time when, to be fair to the politicians, they look at the media, they look at the election results, and they say, well, what really works here is conflict. But if you look around America at the places that are booming already, that don't know there's any recession going on, it's because everybody's working together. So when you look at this bridge and you think about the harmony the wetlands bring between humanity and nature, just remember that. The real deal is that we need victories in real life for ordinary people who want jobs and don't have them, or want full-time jobs and are working part-time, are killing themselves and hadn't had a raise in 10 years. And what brings real victories is cooperation. And somehow we got to realign that. We got to think of the bridge. We got to think of the wetlands. We got to think of harmonizing it. Look, this is a difficult time. The whole world's going through this upheaval and transformation. But that's what I want you to think about. Our country is now the oldest democracy in human history, continuously elected government. We like to think of ourselves as forever young. In many ways, we are. We're a lot younger than a lot of all the other rich countries in the world fully developed. We're younger because we've let in immigrants. So just when we need to stay young, so the retirement of the baby boomers, of whom I am the oldest, doesn't bankrupt the country. We decided we don't need immigrants anymore. That's a big mistake. That's it. They, uh, we're going to be fine if we get back in the future business. But if you go all the way back to the beginning of human civilizations, when countries and civilizations get rich, they get careless and the people that drive the engines of growth try to hold on to the present more instead of putting a little aside to invest in the future. They try to hold on to their positions instead of advancing the purposes for which their leadership was designed. All we got to do is think about putting America back in the future business. There's not, you know, I said in my first inaugural address, there's nothing wrong with this country. It can't be fixed by what right, what's right with it. You think, look at the wetlands, look at the bridge, look at all this, think of the lives of the people we've honored today. There's plenty that's right. And that's what I want to leave you with. There are hundreds of people out here today I have known for most of my life. There are scores of you who can honestly give examples of what you did for me without which I might never have become governor or governor the second time and certainly not president. 
And as we'll talk a little more about tomorrow, when I started 20 years ago in two days, when we do this tomorrow, I think only my mother was certain I would win. <laughs> Hillary and Chelsea were positively undecided. Everybody else thought it was a fool's errand, but it'd be fun to see what New Hampshire was like in the winter. <laughs> That's the way you ought to think about where our country is today. All the possibilities are there, we just have to do the right things. And just like this bridge, we have to do them in a way that brings us together, not drives us apart. All that I learned from you, from the life you gave me, from the laughs you gave me, from the way I watched you overcome your personal tragedy and pursue your personal dreams from all the campaigns we fought, the ones we won, and the ones we lost. It all amounted to building a bridge between my heart and my mind, between my life and everybody else's. That's what we have to do today, all of us. Every time you see the bridge, every time you see the memory of Bill Clark commemorated in this pay on the nature, Ask yourself what you can do to build your own bridges and to create your own harmony. God bless you, and thank you.